Welcome back to Baking and Brewing with Bob and Dominique. Today we're reviewing Groundbreakers Olali. This one's been around for a long time. It has blackberry and rose hips in it. Wow, that sounds really good. I like rose. Who isn't a fan of rose? Very cool. Okay. Closer. Oh. Whoa, I should have caught it. Here we go. Okay. All right, there we go. Nice. It's got the color of like a cider, but it has uh, like head retention like a beer. Yeah, it does. And let's see, this has brown rice syrup, sorghum, tapioca syrup, blackberries, cane sugar, organic lentils, rose hips, and hops. I can smell a little bit of that rose. Oh, I can so smell the berry greenness. for sure. I can definitely smell the berry. Yeah, that blackberry element. Oh man, got it all over the floor. That's a fair amount of blackberry. So fruity. Lot of blackberry. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a light blackberry though. Yeah. It really is. It's like it's um, juicy. It's juicy though. This is a juicy. I feel beer. like I got like almost like got a seed in my, <laughs> in my tooth. <laughs> It has like a really good uh, zip to it, but it's not over like uh, sour or sweet. It's actually, it feels like the uh, left of, it's either a essence of blackberry or they had the blackberry ferment or maybe even like a blackberry bitter. Um, searching for the rose hips, they're hard to find. <laughs> I am searching for the rose hips as well. I think I, when I talk about juicy, there's a certain floral character that adds to the juiciness. Because you're right, it's going to be hard to find. Yeah, I'm curious what but this was bittered be with, like what, what kind of hop, because it really doesn't have much hop character, but there is this noticeable balance to the sweetness. It's a little nutty. I can taste the syrups in solution, right? Like, obviously, I wouldn't say tapioca has a taste, but I would say that sorghum has a little bit of a taste, and I'm getting that on the on the palate a little bit. And the, the rice, nuttiness. too. The nettiness would and from sorghum. the like say from the lentil or does this have chestnuts in it? I would think it would have chestnuts. It does not have chestnuts in it. Oh. It has cane sugar, organic See, lentils. Maybe that is it has sugar like four that I'm picking different up. kinds of fermentables, right? So that oh five technically. I'm a have huge the fan of lentils. Maybe it's that. Right? I, I enjoy lentils. Brown rice syrup one, sorghum two, tapioca syrup three. Blackberries, four. Cane sugar, five. I wouldn't say organic lentils are uh, fermentable from that much of a carbohydrate standpoint. They're much more uh, protein by weight. I guess what you mean when you say the rose is like a tea-like, but it's not like yeah. rose tea. No, it's like green tea. Yeah, it has a little bit of a green tea vibe, actually. It's just Interestingly herbal. enough, like I'm... It's like a ja or maybe a jasmine tree tea. Like it's... Yeah, it's I'm like, really curious about the hop. Is, there, this... is that a hop character? Is that the lentil character? Are you talking about like the aftertaste? Yeah, like yeah. The, like the, the, what it tastes like in your mouth right now? Is it nut or is it bean? Maybe it is lentil. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I like lentil and it, it could remind me of lentil. But if, I mean, that if it's not trust nut, then it has to be lentil. If it's any, if it's any nut for me, or it's, if, it, if it's any sort of uh, legume, it's if we're talking about lentils, actually. Mm -hmm. This reminds me more of chickpea on the back end of the tongue. I knew you were gonna say that. I wanted to wait. I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> um, that's why I started talking about the Indian food. I was like, this reminds mm. me of a lot of different starches. This is like if chana masala was a dessert with no spice, but it had fruit. And it came on a little tart at first. <laughs> and sugar. Yeah. And like that, like tea-like vibe. Yeah, exactly. It's like uh, it's, pretty, it's, it's it's baklava. It's like a, <laughs> a dessert baklava. No, it's kind of like the it's so much of a genmaicha tea, but almost like a ko, mm. a kamugi, which is a barley tea, right? Or maybe that's but from the rice. Without the barley, so maybe that's I'm, from the I rice. Swear, I I think I don't know. It's Very interesting beer, groundbreaker. I'm gonna finish it. And it's so interesting how many different uh, things that are coming together, right? Like all these different fermentable ingredients and it's only four and a half percent, right? So it's my favorite. A lot of subtlety, uh, it feels like with, with amongst the flavors that are used. It's a good, it's an interesting use of sugars. Beer number two from Groundbreaker. Here we go. IPA number five, the classic. 
See a nice, like color. rich, kind of uh, golden, almost amber. I would say maybe copper. A little copper. Boom. Good head retention. I got some lacing on my glass. Very cool. So they have changed up their recipe over the years and look at it where it is today. Sorghum, uh, rice malt, buckwheat malt, organic red split lentils, tapioca maltodextrin, cane sugar, chestnuts, hops, and yeast. So it has everything that had in the original plus more. Oh. I have the cool little logo on the side there. Get a little of that, Ground Bricker Brewing. Very cool, Portland, Oregon. Let's see here. Uh, I would say I get a little bit of stone fruit on the nose, very subtle hop character on the nose at least. Um, but it has this uh, nice, cool hue to it. A little bit, uh, in this kind of a glass, it's, it would it would appear to be slightly hazy. This uh, uh, speaks to potentially a dry hop. My first sip. It's it's got a certain earthy character. That it was I first a little bit earthy, yeah. And now I taste. Well, I mean, it, I'm still getting uh, like more of a Midwest IPA on this one. I wouldn't say that there's like a hop. No, it's definitely not. A yeah, it's a stone guess. fruit hop, which is what, definitely what it feels like. A, a slight, maybe if any, like a whisper of a pine. Um, I would say more of a spicy, yeah, spicy or earthy mm -hmm. bitter, yeah. Yeah, I didn't know how to name that, but it was definitely earthy for the bitterness as well as the smell. Yeah, and I mean, like, mm. there is a slight, I, mean, I wouldn't say, I mean, like, maybe I get a little bit of, of nuttiness. Yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe from the chestnuts. In between, in between taste. Yeah, there is a, a little, little bit, bit of nuttiness, but I'm curious if that's like the lentils and chestnuts or if that is from the buckwheat. Because it's not like... It tastes a lot like the lentils from before. There's certain aftercharacter yeah. that is lentil. I'm assuming, and there you go. good to assume now. Lacing, probably from the yeah. buckwheat. Not like, like, it's like a cooked corn. Oh, this has like a cooked corn taste to you? Yeah. I was going to say there's a slight green apple, and I'm curious if that is either like some of the fact that it's a blending of that many ingredients, and who knows what that's coming from, or if it is potentially the sorghum. I sometimes get a green apple taste from sorghum, and the hop character, if it was like a citrus, um, with an apple, that's not the worst thing in the world. Yeah. But if th there could have been potentially a uh, slight yeast strain. I mean, these yeast are under a lot of pressure in these tanks. So, uh, you know, it's it's interesting to see. Uh, it, a lot of really complex flavors, though. I mean, yeah. it's almost hard to say it's really uh, an IPA. I mean, let's see. It's not that hoppy, besides, the, like, the earthiness. It's and not and we're in Southern California, so I know that's not fresh off the tap, if you will. 5.5% yeah. ABV. Five and a half AB, percent ABV, nice drinkable IPA. Not gonna get too toasted off of a couple. Maybe you could have three in a night yeah. easily, and then probably have your fourth and not bad an eyelash. That's great. Uh, highly sellable beer because of that. Going back for more. Um, they make an affordable beer, and that's one of the things that's really great about Groundbreaker is that you can get all this kind of taste and reliability, batch after batch. And they've really done a lot to really update this recipe. I think that they get a lot of really great beer characteristics out of uh, out of a, you know such a crazy blend of uh, ingredients. It's pretty cool to see all the different grains that they use. It's um and so things that aren't even grains at all. <laughs> I guess legumes. Um, yeah, right. I mean, what is a chestnut? Is that a, a nut or is that something else? It's yeah. what, is it called a chestnut? Well, it it has a shell. So it must be a nut. It's like an acorn. <laughs> Acorns are nuts. So yeah, I'm. This is great. I don't mind it. You know, I, I would, I, but I would call it more of like a pale ale or a Belgian, uh, a Belgian IPA maybe. Mmm. I would go more. It's not that sweet to me. It doesn't have the same yeast type taste or the spice that you're talking about well it's, it, there, it leans drier but it's not the driest ipa i've ever tasted no it's not i don't think it's very dry it's way nutty and that lentil taste definitely it is really nutty yeah i like lentil taste 
So it's not that bad to me. Yeah, it's like I feel like I, I can sense what that is on the palate from the last beer. Because the last beer didn't have chestnuts, this beer does. Last beer had lentils, this beer has lentils, and I can kind of taste, kind of starting to pick that out. Uh, and I, I like lentils, I like using lentils. I have a, a wheat style right now fermenting that uses a, a pound and a quarter lentils. What does, do you think that helps with the, with the lacing as well? Or did sun entirely buckwheat? Wow, that was really good for a second. Yeah, I mean, like, they, they, they used to not have buckwheat in here, and, and I, don't, I, I, you know, we never tasted on the show before. So, you know, I wonder if it is the buckwheat, how much buckwheat they're using uh, percentage-wise. Um, great job, Groundbreaker, for doing, exploring the grains. Yeah, a lot. Like, a lot of different gluten-free ingredients represented in this product, and it's really impressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that specifically to me. Um, That's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got some like. Did you say something about corn? Yeah, cooked corn. Yeah, I, I'm almost getting like a. Um, like you know what you know what. Toasted popcorn. It's like the popcorn. Yeah, kernel. no. So do you understand when I say cooked corn is like um, barbecued corn, where it's barbecued almost corn. like crisp, it's got a little yeah, bit of like yeah. a like a a sweet smoky and it's almost like the that yeah it's almost like that texture too that that like you when you snap off the from the cob mm -hmm. yeah it's it's pleasant uh but it's not necessarily what i would expect in a beer mm -hmm. right but that i somehow something about the taste takes me to a place like that yeah a warmer day in a different month yeah a good barbecue beer on my palate it tasted more like sesame seedy Almost. That's the that, but that's the nuttiness that I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. That's, really yeah, that's gotta be that like chestnut yeah. thing with the lentil. With the lentil oh my yeah. gosh! Wow.